Hello everybody, Dylan with the HD Perspective here. Today I want to do a video about ABS systems on tractor trailer units, troubleshooting them, and doing the repairs. I find a lot of technicians and operators have a lot of trouble with this system and it's really not that complicated once you understand how the system works. Here's a few of the tools that you're going to need in order to troubleshoot an ABS system. A flat screwdriver. I have some ABS wires that I've cut off and put butt connectors on the end, so I've got a male and a female end for plugging into the sensor and also to the ABS module itself. Some side cutters for cutting zip ties, a multimeter, and a way to put power to the ABS wire on the trailer plug, so the blue wire on a trailer, uh, on a truck, you can just turn the key to the on position without the engine running and that will power up the ABS system. For doing any kind of trailer work, you really need one of these light carts. This one's a Trailer Tech T04 and it has a remote on it so you can hook up the glad hands and the seven pin plug and run all the functions of the trailer with a remote even while you're underneath it. You can still troubleshoot an ABS system without the fancy light cart. It just makes life a lot easier. On a trailer, you can just use the tractor and turn the hotline switch on and off to send power down your ABS wire. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check out the details of this machine yourself. Before you get started digging too deep into the troubleshooting, I like to remember the acronym KISS, keep it simple stupid. So what this means is a lot of times on ABS systems the ABS sensor can get pushed away from the tone ring. That's how it works. It runs off a tone ring on the hub. It induces a voltage in the system and it can then compare that voltage to the other axles and then it knows which wheel is spinning faster or slower and can apply the brakes accordingly. On disc brake systems, this is fairly easy to check. It's readily accessible and you can just push the back of the sensor up against the hub. Take the unit for a test drive and see if your light goes out. On some drum brake units, it's more difficult. You need to remove the wheels and the brake drum itself and check to see. Sometimes you can get away with just removing the dust shield and you can get access to the back of the sensor there and push it in. It's always a good idea if you ever have the wheels and brake drums off to always push your sensor up against the tone ring. If you don't have easy access to the sensors, it makes more sense to test the electrical side of the system first. And if you find no faults, then you can always go back and remove all the wheels later and see which sensors pushed away from the tone ring. Here we have the blink codes for the Meritor Wabco system. I believe most of the blink codes are the same between Bendix and Meritor Wabco. I'll leave a link in the description to their website so you can take a look at the blink codes yourself. To access the blink codes, like it says at the top, it says to turn the ignition on for one second, turn it off for one second, and then turn the ignition back on and count the flashes on the ABS lamp. To troubleshoot ABS codes on a tractor, you may need a program to access your trouble codes. To troubleshoot most of your problems, though, you don't need your blink codes. So it's not necessary to plug in a computer into the tractor. And I'll show you how you can do that. If you've got a light cart, then you'd be hitting the auxiliary button on the remote. One thing to keep in mind, especially on trailers, is they never put the sensors in the proper location according to what the manufacturer's diagram says. They just make sure that the sensors and the air lines going to that wheel line up. If it says sensor YE2 line break open or something like that, you can always be sure that that is the proper axle that it's going to. This is what the ABS module looks like. This one's only got two ports on it. Some have four. It doesn't really matter, it all works the same. You can also see the main wiring harness going in on the left, and then the relay valve with all the air lines coming off the bottom. So what you're going to do is you're going to pop the little cage that holds the ABS wires in place 
and then pop your wires off. This is where it really comes handy to have some spare uh, ABS wire ends in your toolbox. I just pop them on in place of the ABS wire. And when you power up the ABS system, you should see five volts on those terminals DC. If you don't see that five volts, then you know that either you're not getting power to your ABS module to power it up, or the ABS module itself is fried. You'll need a wiring diagram to see which terminal you need to see power on, on the main harness coming into the module itself. In this case here, I have my multimeter set to DC volts, and I just plug my lead ends into my little ABS wire that I have made up. A little tricky to do one-handed, holding the camera, but here you can see how it's hooked up. And I have my five volts, so I know that my module is good. I repeat that process for every port on the ABS module and you can verify that every port is receiving its proper 5 volts. Once you've verified that the ABS module is working as it should, you can plug it, your ABS wires back in and then you have to go down to the wheel and find the ABS wire and usually there's a connection between the sensor where it's mounted in the wheel and the ABS wire itself. So you unplug the wire from the sensor and then you want to check for your 5 volts there and make sure that you're getting 5 volts from the ABS module. If you don't see the 5 volts, you know that there is a break in the wire or maybe there's a loose connection. So you need to trace the wire up, make sure your connections are all plugged in properly. And if you still don't see your 5 volts there, then you know that the wire is no good and it will need to be replaced. To test the sensor, you can plug in your other ABS wire that you have made up in and then plug your multimeter into that on your ohm setting and you should see right around 1200 ohms. Bendix gives you a range of about 900 to, I want to say 1400 ohms. Usually I've always seen 1200 ohms, give or take a little bit. You want to go around and do that on each of your axles that have an ABS sensor. Not all axles will have ABS sensors depending on the age of the trailer or the tractor that you're working on. To verify that you've done the repair properly and you've replaced the malfunctioning components, you need to either take the unit for a quick drive and reach a speed of at least 5 miles per hour, or you can jack up the axle and spin the tire five miles per hour until the ABS light goes out. Remember also, once you've done one repair, to check your codes again because it always stores codes in sequence. So you fix one code, then you check again, and there may be a second code, and you won't know until you've repaired the initial problem. To recap, you need five volts coming out of your ABS module, and you want around 1200 ohms the resistance on your sensor. With those two bits of information, you'll be able to troubleshoot about 90% of your ABS issues. And if you've done everything right, when you take your unit for a test drive, the little light on the dash should go out, or the light on the side of the trailer should go out, and you'll be a happy camper. Very rarely will you ever have to replace your ABS module itself. It does happen from time to time, but they're generally very reliable. I hope you find this video useful. If you liked it, please hit thumbs up and uh, subscribe and we'll talk to you in the next one.